Sabrina Spellman is back to raise hell in Greendale and uncover the secret truth about herself in part 2 of her chilling adventures. yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan and in this video I'm explaining everything you need to know about the second season of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, the hidden clues you missed in the episode finale and what to look forward to in season 3. Of course there'll be spoilers so take care if you're not all caught up. The second season of Chilling Adventures finally reveals Sabrina's true parentage. As she goes to confront Lucifer who's risen from hell into Greendale, he reveals that he, the Dark Lord, is Sabrina's father. It's a Darth Vader-esque moment as Sabrina learns her real father is the big bad and she's not the half-witch, half-mortal she always thought she was. Sabrina's conception and birth are a twist on the biblical story of Mary and Joseph, where it was the Holy Spirit, not Joseph, who conceived the baby Jesus in Mary. Biblical references abound throughout this season, with the first episode starting with a dream Sabrina has of her birth, which is reminiscent of traditional Christian nativity scenes. The episode is called The Epiphany with the Three Kings of Hell, an obvious play on the three wise men or kings who visit Jesus. As Ambrose explains in the finale, the Dark Lord's plan in siring a babe of a witch, mortal and infernal blood is to pervert the Holy Trinity. Before this revelation, incredible powers that Sabrina never knew she had are gradually unveiled. In the sixth episode during the Witch Hunter's attack, they place a crown of thorns on her head and pierce her body three times with crossbow arrows, evoking parallels with Christ's crucifixion. Sabrina dies but is resurrected, like Christ, and then, as she levitates with hands ablaze, she sets the Witch Hunters on fire in a scene that reminded me of the end of the first season when Sabrina summoned Hellfire against the Greendale 13, becoming only the fourth witch in history to ever achieve that. She's even able to resurrect Melvin and Elspeth, who the witch hunters had murdered. You're not a witch. What are you? I am the Dark Lord's sword! From Sabrina's words, it's clear that these amazing powers stem from her infernal blood or conception by the Dark Lord. Harvey also points out to Sabrina that she resembles Jean Grey with her phoenix powers in this scene. Jean Grey was this really powerful mutant when she was on the verge of death. Something saved her. Like Sabrina, when Jean Grey had access to the Phoenix Force, her power levels went insane, and there were even instances where the Force brought the dead back to life. These miracles were explored in more detail in the seventh episode, with further parallels being drawn between Sabrina and Jesus. Sabrina restores Roz's sight by getting her to wash her eyes, in a miracle not dissimilar to how Jesus gave sight to a blind man when he ordered him to go wash in a pool of water. Sabrina's devilish DNA seems to give her powers unavailable to her witch brethren, and initially, in her often impetuous way, she assumes there's no downside to these almost unlimited abilities, much to the consternation of her aunt Hilda. Everything has a price. That's how witchcraft works. But I don't think there's a price for me. Who? Huh? Not anymore. No. I think I've tapped into a different kind of magic. One that isn't based on cause and effect. It feels different. You are racking up a cosmic debt the like of which the world has never seen. As Sabrina's friends later discover, her display of extraordinary powers is actually a harbinger of a dreadful future. The mosaic they discover in the Greendale Mines shows that the Dark Lord plans for Sabrina to be the Herald of Hell, in other words, the bringer of the apocalypse. After Lucifer arrives in Greendale, he orders Sabrina to blow the Horn of Gabriel and open the gates of Hell so the VIPs of the underworld can attend her coronation as their queen. Lilith, who has served the Dark Lord all this time in the belief that she would be the one ascending to the throne, decides she's fed up of being constantly cast aside by Lucifer. We do see a slightly softer side to Madame Satan this season when she meets Ms Wardwell's boyfriend Adam and discovers the possibility of a loving relationship. But when the Dark Lord finds out about Lilith's secret relationship, he cruelly kills Adam and serves him up on a platter. So by the time of the finale when Lucifer rejects Lilith again, she decides to team up with Sabrina and the Spellmans to defeat the Dark Lord. After a failed attempt to kill Lucifer in the woods, they concoct a different scheme to entrap him in the Acheron configuration that held the sleep demon Batty Bat. Sabrina and the Coven put on a masquerade dance and Sabrina then captures Lucifer and Edward Spellman's Acheron. However, it doesn't hold for long and the devil breaks out. When Lilith explains that the only prison stronger than the Acheron is the human body, Nick Scratch offers himself as a host body to keep Lucifer imprisoned. Nick, who studied Edward's teaching, says he's the best binder and conjurer since Edward Spellman, and believes he's the only one strong enough to contain the devil. And so Nick Scratch becomes the devil himself, something that's always been hinted at in his name, as old Nick and old Scratch are nicknames for the devil. Nick's actions are also a way for him to redeem himself for secretly betraying Sabrina to the Dark Lord. 
By the way, a nice detail in this scene and episode is the name of the dance that Sabrina and Lucifer perform at the Masquerade, the Mephisto Waltz, which is also the name of a 1971 horror movie about Satanists and body swapping. And after Lucifer is defeated, Lilith finally gets the job she's been wanting forever, Queen of Hell. She takes Nick's body down with her to make sure Lucifer doesn't escape. Before she leaves though, she restores Sabrina's witch abilities. So now my dear, you have both power and freedom, and may you never give up either again. However, it's unclear at this point if these include the full powers we saw on display that came from her infernal heritage, or if it's just regular witch powers. Chaos Season 2 doesn't just overturn the established order in the Underworld. When Lucifer meets with Father Blackwood, the Dark Lord mocks the new Church of Judas that Blackwood has imposed on the Greendell Coven. In fact, Lucifer orders Blackwood to bow down to Sabrina, telling him his church must report to her. Blackwood is furious, as he knows that Sabrina is opposed to the misogynist and regressive rules he's enforced in the church. Plus, he also plotted to kill Sabrina and her family, including Ambrose. Blackwood is so enraged that rather than hand power over the coven to Sabrina, he poisons them all except his daughter Prudence and his twins. Prudence is horrified by this and his plans to continue the Blackwood line by marrying his twins to each other. And with the help of the Spellmans, they manage to save Agatha, Dorcas and some of the other witches and warlocks. We also discovered this season, as many of us already suspected, that Blackwood was responsible for engineering the plane crash that killed Edward and Diana Spellman. The irony for Blackwood is that despite his efforts to block Edward Spellman's reforms, one of the tenets from his manifesto has now become a reality, that all witches must be revered as the matriarchs of the Church of Night. So with Blackwood's departure, Zelda has now become the Church's High Priestess. Blackwood's future looks bleak, with a vengeful Prudence and Ambrose ready to hunt him down next season with swords and crossbows. Signalling that Blackwood's reign over their church is over, Prudence decapitates a Judas statue he installed at the Academy, possibly also foreshadowing her father's eventual fate. I also wonder whether there'll be any long-lasting effects from the Ringa Ringa Roses incantation that the Weird Sisters were performing. In modern times, the traditional rhyming song has been associated with the plague, and we did briefly see Blackwood's nose bleeding while the sisters were singing it. Whether there'll be any lasting ill effects on Blackwood, though, remains to be seen. With Sabrina clearer about her origins and future now, she's much freer to spend more time with her mortal friends Harvey, Roz and Theo, who are often off doing their own thing by themselves in part two. In fact, Sabrina recognises that the trio managed to keep the demonic hordes at bay by themselves when they held the gates of hell closed, so she realises she doesn't need to protect them all the time. Indeed, Sabrina suggests they team up for what Harvey calls the Fright Club, and Sabrina comes up with their first mission, which is to go to hell and bring Nick back. Now that sounds like it could be fun, but it seems pretty likely that something will go wrong and Lucifer will end up escaping. And although Lilith has gone to hell, thankfully we'll still be seeing actress Michelle Gomez on the show, as the original Ms. Wardwell is back, so we'll be finding out if she suffered any side effects from Lilith inhabiting her body. Sabrina also mentioned she's going to look into her mother's side of the family. That could be really interesting, especially if the other baby we saw at Sabrina's birth isn't just symbolic of her dual nature, but is actually a secret twin. Until we find out, I've got a theory video on all the possibilities, which you should check out by tapping in the top right or click the link in the video description. So what did you think of Sabrina Season 2? And do you have any theories or ideas on what you'd like to see next season? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. For more deep dives like this into your favourite TV shows, subscribe and hit the bell to get all my new videos. If you enjoyed this, tap left to watch my Sabrina Twin Theory video, or tap right for another video you're sure to like. Thanks for watching and see you next time, yippee ki movie lovers!